So fun fact for you, this is actually the third to last, or second to last, no, third to last favourites video of the year. That's a little bit scary for me now, and it's actually October the 1st today, so hello October. I always find it really hilarious when people start saying that on the first because it just reminds me of Susie. And it's time to talk about September beauty favourites, and I have a pretty reasonable amount of favourites. I feel like for the last year I haven't really talked in depth about my favourites, but there's a lot of things I've been really into this month, so I have a massive pile sitting here next to me on my bed, and let's just get started. Not that I really know where to start because I literally have so much stuff here. Um, oh, it's falling on the floor. Okay, um, I'll start with some hair bits because they're huge and I want to get them out of the way. Um, I've got two things from the Tresemme Perfectly Undone range here. I'm really into this range, I think it's really brilliant. I've lost the lids of these. I feel like it's always the mark of a really used product when you've lost the lid and you can't find it because it's something I reach for every single day. These are the Dry Defining Spray and the Ultra Brushable Hair Spray. I feel like they used to do this texturizing spray quite a while ago and they might have got rid of it and then brought it out again in different packaging. I think it used to have an orange lid but it's a really good one, it's a very dry spray so there's no kind of thick texture or grittiness with it that you can get with some texturizing sprays. It just gives your hair a bit of workability and something extra to it which just makes it easier to create volume and texture. So that one I really like and then the hairspray as well is really good. Hairspray is probably my most used hair product because I use it to set my hair when I've curled it and then I kind of spray it into the roots a little bit so back home as well. And this one I love because it really is brushable. A lot of them say that you can just brush it out and it feels like it's gone completely but this is probably the only hairspray I've found that actually does what it says on the tin. I really like it. It's not super strong and super long holding because of that but I think that's probably better than having super crispy hair that isn't going to be brushed out at all. So I really like this and I really like the whole range. They have a few other things as well. There's a kind of foamy moussey thing um, and a sea salt spray and I've been using those a little bit as well and I like those ones too. There is another hair thing somewhere. Oh yeah this one here. This is from Kerastase, this is their Cement Thermique. I used to use this all the time when I was younger. Not sure why I kind of stopped. I probably just ran out and couldn't afford to buy it again because 15 year old me had no money at all. Um, but this is kind of like a lotion-y type cream, that's the only way I can think to describe it, maybe a milk, that's what it's actually called, a resurfacing, reinforcing milk for breakage and brittleness and I've been using this pretty much every single day or every single time I wash my hair since I bought this when I last had my hair cut at the hairdressers, that's a little bit of a complicated sentence but using it every day and then for some reason I stopped for a few weeks and I noticed that my hair got so much more brittle and dry and I have a lot of bleach in here so it's prone to dryness and it's prone to a lot of Breakage. So I started using this again, realised I was an idiot for forgetting about it. I love it, I think it's so good. It smells amazing. It smells like the polo that they used to make. I wish they still made them because they were like my favourite sweet ever. Um, but it smells like those citrusy, yellowy, lime green polos really weird description. Again, that just reminds me of being 15, but this is such a good one for just hydration and in a way that your hair doesn't get weighed down. So you put this on wet hair and then blow dry it. It's also got some heat protection in it too, so it helps with that, but it just leaves my hair really soft. And I feel like this is the key for a good hair day for me at the moment, so love this. I think either in last month's favourites or a few videos back, I mentioned a moisturiser that I've been using and really, really been into recently and finally I can now rave about it because favourites time is here and it's the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream. First of all, the packaging of this is so beautiful, really lovely kind of rose gold. It's not actually glass, which I thought it would be, it is plastic, which I guess makes it a lot easier for travel, but it doesn't feel quite as lovely as as it looks. But what's inside is quite literally magic and I kind of doubted this when I first heard about it. Charlotte has been using this I think for years and years. Before she even brought out her own range she'd been kind of mixing up a few products to create this kind of secret magic cream that she used on everyone and it was supposed to just give your skin this super glowy really dewy base to put makeup on top of and I originally thought this would be too rich for me but wow it is amazing. Now I have dry skin particularly at the moment my skin is very dry so I need something that's pretty hydrating and really Really kind of deeply penetrating for my skin and this really is great for that. It kind of sinks in so well. It doesn't sit on top of my skin which I was worried about when I first heard about it. It really gets in there, really hydrates every layer deep down but it leaves this really kind of soft lovely hydrated feel on the skin like there's something there but it's not going to interfere with makeup this actually makes for an amazing base for makeup and I think it's quite rare to find something that is so hydrating that works so well underneath foundations and things but I love this I feel like it's saving my skin at the moment because it's so dry and just not loving the autumn weather 
um, but this cream I'm obsessed with. I also have a mask that I've been trying out this month that I've really, really been into. It's the Origins Original Skin Retexturizing Mask with Rose Clay, and I actually mentioned the serum version of this back in a few favourites ago, I don't think it was the last one, probably the one before, and I really like that, I'm still using it, I'm really enjoying it, but then Origins sent me the mask version, and it's kind of a different one, it's definitely a clay mask, so it hardens and sets down and dries, but it has a kind of exfoliating texture to it, it has some little beads in there which are quite scrubby, so you basically layer this all over your skin and then let it set and dry and it pulls out all the impurities like a good clay mask should do, and then you wet it and kind of massage it into your skin, so it kind of exfoliates at the same time and this just leaves my skin so incredibly soft really really purified and really deeply cleansed but really soft and actually a little bit hydrated too so this I've been kind of going to as my go-to mask for when my skin feels like it needs a bit of a boost or a pick-me-up and I really like it I really like this whole range I'm not sure if there are any other products from it but I would definitely like to try them because these two so far have been amazing so makeup wise I've had quite a few favorites this month and I will start off with this one because I I've talked about it quite a lot already. It's the Naked Smoky Palette from Urban Decay. So this is the fourth, or technically the sixth if you count the basics palettes, in the Naked range from Urban Decay, and I love it. It's fast becoming my favorite of all of them, and I didn't think I'd get that much use out of this because it's a very kind of smoky, very kind of going out type palette, but I've managed to use this pretty much every single day. I'm wearing it now, and I wouldn't say I've got a particularly heavy smoky eye on. It has some really nice shades for just everyday wear, as as well as something a little bit deeper. So these shades at the end are all matte and this brown in particular I've been loving to use as an eyeliner and then these ones here are a little bit more shimmery and pretty and nicer for kind of an everyday look. So this I've been really into. It also does an amazing smoky eye as you would probably expect from a smoky eye palette. The only thing I'd say about this is that for some reason it's not quite as pigmented as all the other Urban Decay Naked palettes, really strangely because those ones are really buttery, super pigmented and really amazing to work with. This one comes pretty close but it's definitely just slightly less pigmented than the others probably because it has some really dark shades in there and they might have been thinking they won't make it too pigmented so you don't overload your eyes with color but that's the only problem with this one I'd say but you can definitely build up enough color to get a really dark really intense smoky look with this probably my favorite of everything this month has been this little pink sponge here this is a beauty blender and I've kind of been in two minds about beauty blenders in the past I've only ever tried the kind of copies or the budget versions and I didn't love them none of them really impressed me but then I tried this out on a whim and I have to say I love it it's absolutely changed the way that I put my makeup on everything just looks so much more blended and smooth and my pores are gone it just makes skin look so great and it makes every makeup product every foundation you use or concealer with this just looks so so good as well so this I think is just life-changing I want to buy a couple more actually there's a few more colors they have a white one and a black one which looks really cool so I might pick up a few more of those but it's honestly just so multi-purpose, I can use it with so many different things. And actually my favourite way to use it has been with the L'Oreal Setting Spray. Both of these I picked up in America and they've just been a dream to work with. I really like spraying this onto the beauty blender before I use it. You can just dampen it with water and then wring out the excess, but I find using a setting spray with this gives it a little bit more longevity when it comes to putting on your foundation, and it just feels really nice and really cool, and you also don't have to run to the sink every time you want to use it, you can just spray it with this. And this stuff as well, on its own, is really great. I kind of just spray it all over my face once I've finished all my makeup. So those two are just a dreamy combination for my skin at the moment. I've also been really into a new concealer, and this one, again, I picked up on a whim. I'd actually run out of concealer and I had to go and buy another one and there was a very limited selection in the boots that I was in. And it's the Rimmel Match Perfection Concealer. Didn't expect to love this as much as I do, but it's actually a really amazing concealer. It's a two-in-one concealer and highlighter, so it's the combination of the kind of pick up pen, brightening concealers you use under your eyes, but I also use this around my face and it has amazing coverage. Because of that, it's also great for covering dark circles. Haven't had to use any correctors or anything like that underneath this. I can pretty much get away with one concealer, which is amazing. And I also really like the packaging. You kind of squeeze it out instead of clicking it up. So I feel like you can get the most out of this. I have now moved on to my second tube of this, but it's lasted me for quite a while and I use it on a daily basis. So this I'm super, super impressed with. And I think it's quite hard to find a really Really good budget concealer at the drugstore so that one is definitely one to check out. Uh, I have another budget favourite in here actually, this is a mascara. I feel like I've talked about this so much recently but it's the L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon 
black mascara. I struggle to say that for some reason, I don't know why. Um, but it's a really great mascara for length and kind of volume and body and I really wouldn't expect that looking at the brush because it's so thin. It feels like there's no bristles on there at all. It's a really strange one. Not sure how it works but it just gives my lashes an amazing length and they just look so great. Probably better than any other mascara I've ever tried which is a pretty bold claim but I really love this. I think it's overtaken the L'Oreal Miss Manga as my favourite drugstore mascara and probably overtaken quite a few in the top five or top three of my all-time favourite mascaras ever. It's definitely pretty high up there so this one I'm really really into. I kind of want to try a few more now from the telescopic range. I think there's also a version that's supposed to have kind of fibres in it too so it's even more lengthening and even more volumising so if you have tried that one let me know if it's any good but for now I will be sticking to this one but I'm sure I feel like I need a new tube with this soon so I'm going to have to go out and buy a new one. And then a few lip products that I've been really into. Now these are both from the MAC haul that I did a few weeks back. I will link that down below for you if you haven't seen it already. And these have become my two favourites of the four things that I picked up. So the first one is a lipstick and of course I think I actually mentioned in the video this would probably end up being my favourite because it's a bright corally pink lipstick. It's super corally, super bright, really kind of fluorescent I'd say. Very dramatic kind of bright lipstick but I absolutely love it. It's been my kind of go-to summer colour. Obviously we're now in autumn so I've kind of cracked out the berry lipstick for today but this I really wore non-stop while I was in Greece and whenever the sun comes out I just want to reach for this because it's such a pretty brightening really flattering colour. And then I also picked up a few lip liners. I got Saw and this one here which is Boldly Bare and this has become my favourite of the two. I do like Saw but because I'm quite pale I feel like it's a bit too bold on me sometimes. It's quite intense and quite dark whereas this is a bit more of a kind of everyday your lips fit better colour but it's slightly more peachy and darker and a little bit cooler tone than my lips are but I really like it. I'm actually kind of surprised at how much I do like it. So I've kind of been wearing this all over my lips kind of penciled in and also under other nude lipsticks and I just think it's a really great lip liner colour. My last favourite this month is a fragrance. I feel like I talk about a new fragrance every month but I kind of like to swap between them quite a lot. Sometimes I'll find one that I'll just use non-stop um, but then other times I kind of change it every single day but this one I kind of purposely bought on holiday with me and I've been using it throughout the month of September quite a lot and it's Dolce & Gabbana Light Blue and now every time I smell this it reminds me of holidays which is great. I love how you can use a perfume at a certain time in your life or when you've been somewhere and it then reminds you of that so this kind of makes you think of summer holidays and sun and the fragrance itself is actually very kind of light and fresh and summery it's kind of a bit floral and also a bit citrusy I really really like it and this is actually a little small kind of spray version that I picked up in the US I love that they do them in this size because they're just so easy to travel with and take with you where you're going, just chuck in the bottom of your handbag. So I wish they did more of these in the UK, but I think I might actually have to repurchase the full size of this once I run out because I really, really like it. It's a really lovely, fresh, pretty scent. And those are actually all my favourites. I feel like I totally whizzed through that probably because I'm about to go out and get pancakes and that is all that is on my mind at the moment. So I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know if any of those were your favourites this month or if you've been trying them out, if you like them and also if there's anything else you think I should try. And thank you all so much for watching. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you're new and I will see you all soon. Bye.